A foreigner fascinated by Korea shares Korean culture with other non-Koreans. Originally from France, Leo Moro is a travel specialist on Korea's tourist attractions and a YouTuber posting about Korean culture. Having lived in Korea since 2016, Leah traveled to several cities across Korea and introduced them on her YouTube channel. She also wrote her English guidebook, Jeollanamdo, for foreign tourists in Korea during her stay in Jeollado province. On Heart to Heart, we will hear from Leah Moro, who has a passion for promoting Korean culture. Travel is a part of today's guest's life. Uh, she has traveled in over 25 countries and features uh, advice, travel tips, even inspirational stories and video uploads on traveling across Korea on her YouTube channels. Uh, Leah Mo is enjoying her Chuseok holidays, which is a Korean version of Thanksgiving right here in Korea, and she is beautifully dressed in a hanbok. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy too, and uh, yes, we, I guess we're we're both dressed for the Chuseok holidays. Sure. <laughs> uh, how often do you dress in a hanbok? Uh, so actually, I bought this hanbok like three years ago when uh -huh. I first uh, decided to move to Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because one of my friends was getting married and I thought as I'm going to live in the country, maybe I will encounter new uh, experience to wear my hanbok. Mm -hmm. And I'm wearing it quite often because mm -hmm. I'm making my YouTube videos yes. in my handbook. So. I have seen them, Thank you so in the handbook as well. So I did, uh, you know, in our previous introduction, I did mention that travel is a part, a huge part of your life. Yes. Um, you've traveled to so many countries across the world. You're still very young. I can't believe to how many <laughs> countries you've traveled to. Um, but you specifically, uh, you know, try to promote Korea, yes. our history, our tradition, and places to visit, and so on and so forth. And now you have settled down in Korea. You live here yes, in Korea. Yes, I'm living in Korea. Yes. Uh, so I do want to talk about the locations, what you do here. But first of all, uh, since it is the Chuseok holidays, where in Korea we gather with family, you know, it's a sure. major holiday. During times like this, uh, do you miss family and friends back home, or? Um, I don't really miss my family because they are like travelers as well. Oh. So like my whole family love to travel. So they understand my lifestyle and mm -hmm. they understand my passion for Korea. Mm -hmm. But I would say that I'm really lucky to have like true friends uh, in Korea. Yeah. So every time I spend Chuseok, I can spend them like with them mm -hmm. and we often like eat traditional Korean food yes. and have a good time together. So mm -hmm. I never actually feel lonely in the country. Uh -huh. Let's talk about uh, how you came to know about Korea and what drew you to Korea. So actually when I was young, I can't really remember which age, but mm -hmm. around 10 years old, uh, I was in my grandfather's house and actually my grandfather had a book about Korean history. Mm -hmm. So even if I was really young, I really wanted to learn about more about Korean history and that's how I got interest about Korea. And then after I went to high school, uh -huh. I met a friend who really was into K-pop. And so that's how I started to learn more about South Korean culture mm -hmm. and about K-pop, K-drama and uh, Korean food as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have fallen in love with Korea. Totally. <laughs> Fully. <laughs> yes. All right. So you travel to, of course, uh, you live in Korea now. Yes. Uh, but when was the first time you came to Korea? Uh, that was in 2014. Uh -huh. and 
And during this time, I was currently doing my studies in Thailand. In Thailand. So the flight tickets were not really expensive, though. So that's the way how I could come to Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in 2014, you not only visited Korea once, but I think you visited like three times. Yeah, three times. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you actually did not have the chance to come to Seoul during your first visit. Right. Uh, you did travel to different parts of yes. Korea. Could you tell us about that? Uh, so actually, the very first time I came to Korea, uh, I was planning to visit a friend uh -huh. who was uh, living in Seoul. But when I arrived, I realized that he moved back to Gumi mm. to restart his studies. Mm -hmm. So I just took a bus from Incheon airport to go to Gumi directly. So uh -huh. I didn't have the chance to go to Seoul. And I started to my travel to go to Gumi, Andong, Daegu, Ulsan, Gyeongju, Busan. So actually, I've seen a totally different side of Korea than what I would have imagined. Yes. And that was such an interesting experience for me. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time in the foreign media, you can see more about Seoul or right. Busan or K-pop. The bigger, K the large but, cities, right? Yeah. So like when I went there and saw the more rural or like mm -hmm. more traditional way of Korea, like side of Korea, mm -hmm. that was uh, really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. And that's got me fall in love more with the country. <laughs> <laughs> and it kept you coming back. Yes. Right. right. I see that you're very satisfied, very happy with life in Korea. Yeah, it's I'm really place, satisfied here. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, but you have actually written an English language guidebook. Yes for Jeollanamdo province. Right. <laughs> uh, not only have you written an English, I guess, travel guidebook for Jeollanamdo province, you yes. actually uh, decided to live in Gwangju, which is in uh, South Jeolla province. Yes, right. Why Gwangju? Um, actually, <laughs> I can say it was destiny. Ah. Um, because I had the passion about Korean history. Mm -hmm. And as you may know, Gwangju is famous for the May 18 democratic movement. Mm -hmm. But not only, uh, during the time I was looking for an internship, one of my soul friends actually visited a really nice guest house in Gwangju. Uh -huh. And it was hard for me as a French not speaking Korean mm -hmm. yet to find an internship in Korea. And my friend decided to recommend me to this guest house in Gwangju. Uh -huh. So when the owner of the guest house say, yes, you can come and learn with me, then I just thought it was a sign, it was destiny. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I choose Gwangju, but Gwangju choose me as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I would think that France and Korea, if we were to talk about the similarities, yes. things we share or have in common, I would have to say maybe the special uh, I guess the local specialties, yes. cuisines, right. alcoholic beverages. Yeah, right. I mean, we love food. Yes, um, and French do as well. <laughs> exactly. So how would you describe the food that you actually tried in Gwangju? How different is the food in Gwangju compared to and a food you'll find in other parts of Korea? I think like the food in Jola province is just so delicious. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really think about is the banchan. So banchan, actually... The so-called like, like side, side dishes, dishes sorry. Right? So actually, I think when you go to Seoul in any restaurant, you have maybe three or four different mm -hmm. side dishes. But uh -huh. when you go to Jola province, you have like eight or 10 of them. So they really want to, you to try the different type of food. And another reason why the gastronomy is so famous in Jola province is because a lot of like farmers are growing the products of mm -hmm. Korea in that province. Mm -hmm. So you can have the freshest uh, product Yes. So I think that's uh, one of the main reasons why the gastronomy is so famous there. Mm -hmm. And I think in Gwangju especially, kimchi and dokgalbi are ah. really famous. So if you ever come to Gwangju, I recommend you to try this. And here you are food. promoting Gwangju. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if All right. you ever come to Gwangju. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't, um, I mean, it, in different parts across Korea, of course, yes. um, some regions have a stronger taste. Yeah, right. Some have a very... I guess, blander taste, mm, uh, yeah. not as spicy. Yes. Some will find really spicy, very yeah. salty foods. Yeah. Usually in Gwangju, in the Cholla province area, yeah. we'll find a foods. More fishy, actually. Ah. Yeah. Like, because in their kimchi, they're using that this kind of like small uh, like shrimp. Like, I don't know how. Fermented. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fermented. It's like, so uh -huh. the, the, 
taste of kimchi is so different mm -hmm. from Gwangju and Seoul. Yeah. And as I move to Korea in Gwangju especially, uh -huh. when I go to other cities, I think their kimchi is so different. I can test it. Yeah. Even I'm a foreigner. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so you first lived in Gwangju for yes. two years. Yes. And then now you live in Suncheong yeah. County. Yeah, Gochujang, Suncheong. That's right, <laughs> yeah. Suncheong, Gochujang, the uh, red pepper paste. Right. Yes, Suncheong is known for the red pepper paste. Yeah. So uh, why the move? What made you decide to move to Suncheong? So actually, there there are like few reasons. Uh -huh. One of them is because I'm so interested about Korean traditional food, mm -hmm. and as I've been living in Gwangju for more than two years, then I was thinking I need a change. And Suncheong, as it's famous for the traditional ferment, it's so it's not only about gochujang, but like ganjang uh -huh. and uh, duenjang. Mm -hmm. So you can try different type of food. And I really love Jola province. So I've been traveling a lot in Jola Namdo, but I wanted to discover more about Jola Bukdo. Okay, the northern. Yeah, the right. northern uh -huh. part. So now as, as I'm living in Suncheong, I want to discover more about the different cities in Jola Bukdo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other reason is because I got a really good job opportunity there. So uh -huh. it's why I moved to Suncheong. So tell us about this great job opportunity. So I became officially a Korea's civil servant mm -hmm. in Suncheong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, getting a job as a civil servant in Korea, in yes. particular, it's it's very competitive. There's I fierce know. competition. Yes, it's a very popular yeah. uh, occupation. Yes, I know most of my Korean friends they say like this is the dream job for <laughs> Korean. Yeah, and um, I feel really honored, and I feel like really lucky to have this opportunity to work at Suncheong County. Mm -hmm. So basically. Uh, it, it was a long process because I don't think a lot of foreigners I, are hired as Korea civil mm. servants. So we had a lot of paperwork to do and I had to do all the like government uh, application process. Uh -huh. So it took so around six months actually to do all the paperwork and the different interviews, writing some reports all in Korean. So I got some help from my Korean uh -huh. friends. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really easy, but I got it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> good for you. Yeah. Wow, six months. Yeah, from December and mm -hmm. I started my work on the 20th of June. Okay. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now, you also have started your YouTube channels yes. too, am I correct? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Lay Adventure right. and Cholla Go. Yes. So how and when did you actually uh, start your YouTube channels? So the first one was Lay Adventure, uh -huh. which I started just to share about my uh, daily life in Korea. Mm. And they don't have so much French YouTuber living in Korea. Uh -huh. So I first started to share share just to French people who have maybe the dream to come to Korea okay. to know what's the real lifestyle in Korea, mm -hmm. not only about the Korean drama, but real life, mm -hmm. like about my working life or how to get a visa, about the Korean history as well. And then uh, as I was living in Gwangju, I realized a lot of foreigners doesn't know where you can go, what you can do, mm -hmm. and what are the fun activities and attractions you can see in Gwangju and Jola Namdo. So I started Jola Go, which uh -huh. is like go to Jola Namdo, go to Jola Bukdo. Uh -huh. That's the meaning of the channel. I see. So yeah. Jola Go is fo focused more on Jola. Province, yes, right? it's uh, like a travel channel mm -hmm. where I just try to promote the different cities and different activities, festival, mm -hmm. you can enjoy while coming to Jola Do. Okay. <laughs> and Lay Adventure, I think it caught a lot of people's attention actually, a video upload. I think it was one on Lay Adventure. Uh, uh, yes. It was in French. Yes. <laughs> um, and there was a part where you were talking about the Inter-Korean Summit. Right. And you were actually tearing up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about that video um, upload. It's just like, since I was 10 years old, I've been interested about Korean history. Uh -huh. And knowing that both South and North Korea have been divided, um, I really feel connected to Korean mm. people and how it must be painful for the families to not be able to cross the border. Uh, so out of all the political aspects, I just think that Korea as a whole through the history is one people, mm -hmm. one country. And actually one of my Korean friends, her grandfather was living in Pyongyang. Mm. And um, he, 
he came to Korea but never could go back home. So actually one of my friend's dream is to maybe, if the borders open, to go and visit her grandfather's place yes. because it's a part of her history and part sure. of her family. Mm -hmm. So knowing all this, um, seeing the summit on TV, I thought it was such a historical moment. Mm -hmm. And I became really emotional because for me, I feel really related to Korean people. and. Yeah. yeah, I was able to sense that because we're not talking about a three minute video, it was quite long. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I tried to like share what was the meaning mm -hmm. of that summit mm -hmm. because a lot of French people don't know about it and we don't learn about Korean history or Asian countries history in general. Uh -huh. So a lot of people, even my parents, they didn't know. So after they watched this video, my mm -hmm. mom called me and she was like, I didn't know about all this. Um, like information that you I gave see. online so uh -huh. yeah so do you even get uh, you know recommendations from followers i mean messages from I them do asking sometimes. you to travel to a certain part and yes. uh, uploading something on those locations not so much so far because uh, i don't have so much followers because uh -huh. it's really like a like a niche market mm -hmm. so it's really small people who watch like it's not it's not a lot of people who watch my uh, youtube channel yet mm -hmm. but yeah some of them recommend me on facebook especially they say oh you should go there and there or there is this special festival at that time so please go there they're really happy when they see a foreigner go to these places uh -huh. so there they're happy that i can promote so more foreigners can come sure yeah. and your videos are fun to watch i mean <laughs> uh, you know you upload videos from you just biking yeah. <laughs> in the park. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just, I guess, videos you can watch just, you know, relaxed. And there are more, I guess, energetic, exciting ones as well. So you have yeah. a whole array of all different types of videos. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you have been receiving great reviews and yeah. even responses from your followers. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so then tell us about how you create your videos. Yeah. Um, do you have someone going out with you to film you? I mean, do you edit yourself? I mean, tell us about the whole process. So mainly I do all the process by myself, uh -huh. but as I started to work for the Sun Chang Kunti, mm. uh, sometimes as I want to have a full vision of the place or me, and then the like landscape in the background, uh -huh. some of my coworker help me filming. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I'm alone and then editing by myself too. So it's a whole process. <laughs> wow. It takes a lot of time. So on average, uh, how long does it take you to work on one single video from filming to editing yes. and uh, uploading it? On uh, it, it depends on the location. It depends how long I need to look for the information uh, as well. Mm -hmm. But usually I will say like three days. Three yeah. days? Yeah around three or four days like just like looking for information like one day and then mm. going to the location filming but sometimes I had to go back because of the weather or right. other uh, circumstances mm -hmm. and then editing takes one to four, one to two days yeah okay. all right uh, we'll of course talk more with Leia but for now we are going to take a quick video break and uh, take a look at how Leia spends her days in Korea Leah Moro's routine day in Korea is quite unique. She is at this Hongjong Station Market of Gwangju City to film a video clip that introduces Jeollado Province to foreigners. Okay, so now, guys, I will show you like a special tip. She tries uh, to help foreigners visiting Korea to become familiar with and closer to the country. So, I still got the key of this place. Yay! <laughs> Here, I'm in Songchong Market, and actually, I'm filming like a YouTube videos for our Jeollago channel. Uh, because I want to introduce uh, to like foreigners this market because you know it's really interesting part of Korean traditional culture and with my YouTube channel I want to introduce like the best place to visit in Gwangju and in Jola Damdo and Jola Bukdo province. Also she is planning a city bus tour for foreign tourists. Her efforts to promote Korea make people wonder what her next step may be. Lea Moro is with us to tell us more. 
So your travel guidebook, I'm curious, yes. how long did it take for you to work on it? How long did it take to, to finally publish the book? Uh, so actually it took my whole internship, so around six months. Six months. Yeah, because I was doing everything by myself. Mm -hmm. So from writing to taking pictures and description, how to get there. Um, and like editing everything I've done by myself. Mm -hmm. So this guidebook is only available in our guest house for now, uh, but that's my precious baby. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. so, so what if any of our you know, viewers yes. want to get their hands on that guidebook? I mean, what can they do? They should come to Kwangju in the guest house. <laughs> yeah, okay. for now. Mm -hmm. I guess for the lucky yes. ones living in Kwangju, they could uh, sure. yes, visit yeah, the guest yeah. house and pick up the book. Yeah. All right. Um, I noticed that there are lots of photos in the book as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you take all the photos yourself? Yeah, I took all by myself. Wow. So it's why, like, usually for one week, I was going to one to two different locations mm -hmm. and taking all the, like, pictures by myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess, you know, in order for you to travel to so many different places, yes. you might need the special skills to read, you know, the signs. Right. Because mm -hmm. you need those skills yes. to travel. Yeah. Uh, any difficulty or... So the funny thing is, uh -huh. uh, the first, very first time I moved to Korea for eight to nine months, mm -hmm. due to my visa and because of my budget, uh, I didn't have a phone number. I didn't have Wi-Fi. So every time I was going to travel to a different place, I was uh, taking pictures by my camera of the Google map, how to get to the place oh. beforehand. Because when I was reaching the destination, I didn't have any information, no Wi-Fi, nothing to go to the places. Mm -hmm. But in another way, that was a good way for me to feel like as a foreigner, because I could experience like, and know exactly how to describe the place so people could know how uh -huh. to get to the place. Uh -huh. So yeah, it was kind of challenging at first to read the sign, but after like two weeks, I learned how to read Hangul. So mm. then it became easier for me. Right. Yeah. Hangul is easy to learn. Yeah, maybe then not after to speak gets, yeah. Korean, uh, not the language, but reading uh, yeah. the Korean alphabet. Hangul is not so difficult. No, it's not difficult. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you uh, revisited any of the places that you've mentioned in uh, in the travel book? Uh, in the travel book, yeah. a lot actually. Any but uh, one of the places I really like is uh, Unjusa Temple. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, near Wasun. So Wasun is famous for the dolmen and then the temple. Mm -hmm. So I really like this place because it's lost in middle of the mountain and there is no one there. And you can do some like trek around the temple. Uh -huh. And another place I really like, it's an island. It's uh, near Wando and it's called Gumodo. So, Kumodo? Yeah, Kumodo mm -hmm. Island. I really love this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There are so many hidden treasures. I know. <laughs> right? A lot. And it's amazing how you had the opportunity uh, to travel to all these different places. I know. Uh, I understand that you have a special interest uh, in Pansori as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like a, a yeah. traditional storytelling, Korean yes. storytelling, um, which is a UNESCO intangible heritage as mm -hmm. well. Uh, you have been to number of Pansori performances. Yes. So tell us about uh, that experience and, and why uh, this, uh, I guess, particular love or affection for Pansori. I, I feel like when you're watching a Pansori performance, it's not only about what they're wearing or about what they're singing, but you can see the emotion mm -hmm. and you can feel the emotion when you're listening to people. So it's one of the main reasons why I love Pansori. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, as you say, it's one of the UNESCO intangible heritage of Korea. I really feel like everyone who comes to Korea should listen at least one time Pansori mm -hmm. because you can learn about the Korean culture and usually like Pansori singers they're wearing like traditional clothes yes. and in the background you can see some of the traditional Korean paintings mm -hmm. so you can see like for one two three hours you can see like a part of Korean culture. Mm -hmm. so. I love how, you know, people, especially a lot of foreigners, non-Koreans, when they go to see a Penn study performance, they say, wow, I was able to connect with yeah, the right. performers. Yes. Um, you don't have to understand the language, no. understand what they are saying. Yeah, or, right. Right? As long as you kind of have that connection. Yeah. And, and the way they are like, um, they are 
playing with mm -hmm. their voice, you can feel when people are angry, when people are happy, when uh -huh. they are sad. It's really entertaining. Mm. And for me, it's like going to theater, actually. Uh -huh. It's like a mix of like music and play. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> yes. All right. Last but not least, could you tell us about uh, the projects that you're working on at the moment? Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'm just uh, trying my best to promote Sun Chang. Mm. Uh, I hope that a lot of people will come to Sun Chang and then uh, in this year fall like end of the year I will become a tourist guide uh, for the new uh, city bus in Sun Chang between Sun Chang and Damyang mm -hmm. so I hope a lot of people could come and of course I will try my best to keep writing and documenting my life in Korea mm -hmm. and promoting the best I can to French and foreigners uh, viewers mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, one more thing I know that you love to travel yes um, and uh, do you plan to live in Korea for as long as you can or, yeah, or do you have any course. plans to uh, I guess travel to or, or s live in any other countries? Uh, about Korea, I really have the dream to go to Ulungdo and Dokdo uh -huh. because they are part of Korean island mm -hmm. and I wish I can go because they look so far away but they're still a part of Korea sure. and then abroad um, yeah, I wish I could go to uh, like Myanmar, actually. That's mm -hmm. one of the countries I'm interested in. Okay. So, yeah, I love travel. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's always so nice to talk about traveling. And thank you for your insights. Thank, thank you for you sharing so your stories. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank, thank you for you. coming on the show today. Thank you. I think for every one of us, we feel a sense of affection for a certain person or a thing without reason. And today's guest, Leia Moreau, Korea is a country that uh, she focuses her love and affection for. Uh, I really enjoyed our conversation today and I hope that your Choose a Holiday will be full of love and happiness. Thanks for joining us today. I'll see you again next time.